data or is it data? Whatever you want to call it, we're living in a world full of it. It's even lifeblood for a lot of organizations. In the quest for meaningful insights, data is ingested, copied and processed in all sorts of ways, resulting in new data being generated, a bit like data having babies. So there's a lot of power in the data, but it's not all plain sailing. Storing your ever-growing mountain of zeros and ones can present significant challenges, particularly when it comes to scaling to keep up. To handle the growth effectively, you need to be able to scale your storage quickly, easily, and with cloud-like agility. And that's where Nutanix Objects comes in. Hi, I'm Steve. In this short video, we're going to take a look at how easy it is to scale Nutanix Objects deployments. That's scaling both within a cluster and out across multiple clusters. It really is dead easy. Come and see. Okay, so we're here in Prism Central. You can see we have a cluster consisting of four physical nodes and we're going to head down here and choose the object service. Okay, we can see we've got an object store already deployed and it consists of three nodes or VMs. Now, I just want to quickly clarify the difference between scaling capacity and scaling performance within an object's deployment. In this graphic, there are three physical nodes and three worker VMs, one per node. A physical node, pretty obvious, is a server or host, typically with a storage dense configuration. And a worker VM, or worker node as it's also known, is a special type of VM that provides the overall object service. You may be interested to know that inside these workers, the individual components that make up the object store are containerized and orchestrated by Kubernetes. If we wish to add only storage capacity, we can simply add another physical node and all of the storage resources in that node will become instantly available to the existing workers. And if you're already familiar with Nutanix HCI, you'll know how easy and straightforward adding a node is. So no new workers are needed when scaling capacity. If, however, we wish to scale performance, i.e. increase the IO processing bandwidth of the object service layer, we add another worker VM, and that's the process we're going to walk through now. Okay, having selected our object store, we go to the Actions drop-down menu and choose the option Scale Out. Now, it'll only let us do this if there's a spare physical node in the cluster, one that doesn't already have a worker VM running on it. We keep workers separated from one another using anti-affinity rules, and that's to maintain high availability. So we'll go ahead and add the VM, and the message there confirms that we're making a change to the object store. And this took about six and a half minutes, but I'm speeding it up here just to keep things moving along. But basically, it's deploying the worker and adding it to the object store. Okay, all done, and we now have four worker VMs powering our object store, and so the object store can handle more load. So scaling within the cluster, very straightforward, but what about scaling out across multiple clusters? Well, we'll do that next. This time, we'll click into the object store, and go to the clusters view, and we can see it's just our one original cluster there currently, so we'll click the Add Cluster button. And any other clusters being managed by this Prism Central will show up in this list right here. Simply select the cluster whose storage you want to tap into, and you can limit how much that cluster's capacity objects is able to consume. That cluster could be serving other workloads, for example. And away you go. Now the multi-cluster capability can also be really useful if you have underutilized Nutanix clusters in your estate and want to tap into their resources in a useful way. It's ideal for that. The other thing I want to point out is that you can add up to four clusters to your original objects cluster in this way, and they all sit under a common S3 namespace. Okay, that's complete, and we can see we've got around five terabytes of that cluster storage at our disposal. Next up, let's write some data to one of our buckets. Let's go for this bucket. And I've got a few large files here I can upload as objects. This is using the inbuilt Nutanix Objects browser. I'm speeding this up because we've all got busy lives. Okay, there they are. And now if we go back to Prism and check the consumed capacity, you can see that it's actually using capacity from both the original cluster and the added cluster. So the multi-cluster scalability applies even to the contents of an individual bucket. And there you go, easy as that. Scaling to multi-petabyte does not have to be hard, especially when your platform is software-defined and web-scale in nature. 
Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next Objects video. And there's plenty more where that came from. If you'd like to know about new videos as they're released, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Have a good one.